folks, Shane here, and welcome back to the How to Smoke Meats video tutorial series. Marinating meat is my favorite flavor enhancing process because it blends a unique flavor with the smoke to form a delicious combination. Marinades penetrate only a few millimeters into the meat surface. Selecting the right marinating container can help speed up the process and save space in your refrigerator. The marinating container can be as simple as a sealable bag or a container with an airtight lid. For large quantity smoking sessions, I use a tall commercial container that fits easily in my refrigerator. My preferred method of marinating is under vacuum. I use a VacMaster VP215 chamber vacuum sealer with 10 inch by 12 inch zipper vacuum pouches that can hold a nice size steak or about five chicken thighs combined with four to five ounces of marinade placed in the refrigerator overnight. We begin with 28 boneless, skinless chicken thighs rinsed and ready for seasoning. We will be marinating 10 pieces in Korean BBQ sauce for chicken, 10 pieces in Hawaiian huli huli sauce, 4 pieces with McCormick rotisserie chicken dry rub, and 4 pieces with Weber KC BBQ dry rub. All pieces will be vacuum sealed in 10 by 12 inch zipper vacuum pouches. Shake the marinade container to mix the ingredients. Then remove the lid and set aside. Place five chicken pieces into one of the vacuum pouches, leaving three to four inches of space at the top. Measure one ounce of marinade per piece, or five ounces total in a measuring glass. Pour the marinade into the vacuum pouch. Be careful to elevate the opening so the marinade remains in the pouch. We have prepared four pouches with five chicken pieces each, two pouches with Korean BBQ marinade, and two pouches with Hawaiian Huli Huli marinade that are now ready to be vacuum sealed. One of the white platforms is removed to help keep the marinade in the pouch. Place the pouch opening over the ceiling bar and into the space behind it as shown. Lower the top of the vacuum sealer to begin the process. The top will automatically rise once the pouch is vacuum sealed. The entire process takes about 40 seconds. So this portion of the video has been speeded up to twice the normal speed. Remove the vacuum sealed pouch from the chamber and place another one into position. Then lower the top to start the vacuum sealing process again. In the meantime, use a felt marker to label the sealed pouches. Once the marinating pouches 
have been vacuum sealed and labeled, stack the pouches flat in your refrigerator overnight. The other two seasoning profiles are dry rubs that will be evenly applied to all surfaces of the remaining chicken pieces. The factory seasoning container application holes are too large and will result in uneven application and over seasoning. Transfer the dry rub into the stainless steel seasoning container that best matches the seasoning grain size. Do not rub the chicken with any oil. Oil is a barrier and will effectively stop the smoke from coming in contact with the meat. The smaller seasoning application holes in the stainless steel container provide more control to lightly dust and cover all surfaces of the chicken pieces. Gently pat the seasoning onto the chicken piece after applying an even coating. Separate the rotisserie chicken dry rub seasoned chicken pieces from the KC BBQ dry rub seasoned chicken pieces in preparation to place into pouches, then vacuum seal and label. Once the dry rub pouches have been vacuum sealed and labeled, stack the pouches flat in your refrigerator overnight. Well, there you have it, folks. Whether you're using a single seasoning profile or several at a time, take a picture of the marinade containers and keep detailed notes in your smoker log. I've included links to the equipment and accessories discussed so you can order or learn more about them. See you in the next video.